Hello all, welcome back. Today, another horned animal. This one's kind of unique. I'm gonna rephrase that because this one is incredibly unique. Uh, this is the four horned ram. I believe it's what they call a Jacob's ram. And this little guy, there's the front view. That's the rear view. Holy cow, I've never done one, but critters are critters, and I think we'll have no problem doing it. This one's been skinned. It came to me with very little tissue on it. So I'm just gonna drop it right down in the pot, and with horned animals, no soaps or degreasers to start. I'm gonna boil, pop the horns off. I'm gonna mark these so I know what goes where, and then we'll wash it clean and put it back together and see how it looks on the wall. Thank you for watching. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are a return viewer, of course, welcome back. First step, we're gonna boil this skull. So I like to fill a pot with water, start a big fire underneath, and then submerge that skull in the water until we hit a boil. The last video with this burner. You're never gonna see it again. I have nursed this thing for so many years. It is so bad. I bought a really nice burner. We'll feature it in the next video. We'll see how it goes. Just way, just a super, super great frame. I did get a pot manufactured and done. Uh, I honestly don't know if it's gonna be price competitive for anybody, but it's gonna be nice. It's gonna just fix all this kind of hodgepodge stuff you see from me. To be honest, as many as I do, I should have a little bit better system. Um, so we're getting there little by little. Let's check back when it hits a boil. Once that skull has hit a boil, I shut it way down immediately. So it's just a simmer. For those of you that came to watch something satisfying, I think you're gonna like to watch these horns come off. I just give a good twist and the horn will break free of the membrane that attaches to the horn core I just repeat the process until all four horns are off and then put the skull back into the boil. A little tip when you're washing horns, always, always, always wash them in and out. I get a lot of comments about stink. I've never had stink in horns and I think maybe that inside is not getting a good rinse. When you take a horn off like that, it's still pliable. Can you see how, let's do this. Can you see how pliable that horn is? It's gonna retain its shape once it's dry and be hard. It's gonna sound hard, but this is all still growing, okay? So once you take it off there, it's gonna, I don't know what that has to do with washing the horn. All right, last piece. So I popped those horns off, I washed them good in and out. That boil now is at a real low, low simmer, just kind of getting things warm. We're trying to get that meat to separate from the bone naturally. Like if you cooked a pot roast with a bone in it, as soon as it starts to pull away, the meat's cooked. Same principles with skulls. So I'm gonna pull it out once that skin on the nose is split and then I'm gonna start power washing. I'm using a very small power washer. This is a little 1600 PSI unit. It's 110 volt, very basic. And I'm gonna spray into every hole and every orifice. If you see a hole on that skull or a anywhere, I want you to spray in there and get rid of all that meat and tissue. That is white bone creation law. Let's get to worship. Here I'm removing the ear canal with a screwdriver and opening up a hole in the back to loosen up the tissue that connects on the back of the head. Hey, my fellow skull people. How often does a loved one come home when you're doing skulls and be like, oh my gosh, you have brains all over your face. 
because at my house that happens like three times a week. <laughs> well, check this out. I pulled that thing out of the pot, did this super cool thing where I filmed it, it went on the ground, every hole, every orifice, and then I started spraying for like, I don't know, 10 minutes, and I moved it. And so I went over to check, see if it was in frame. Nope, not in frame. So I shortchanged you one big piece of washing. For that, I'm gonna make it up with an epic tip. Here's the tip. If you're spraying gray brown meat and it's getting tough and you see white or pink meat, you need to boil longer. So just wash all the brown off, all the brown and gray, make it go away. And then your pink tissue, put it back in the boil, let it turn brown and then wash. Get them 90%, then put them into the peroxide. I'm gonna, I'm gonna film this next piece for you when I pull it out. It's gonna be so good. Wait for it. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're gonna love it. Watch. Just to get in front of a couple of questions, yes, I wash the brain completely out and I wash all the nasal cavity out. It's the only way to get them clean. Another fun fact, check this out. So I, I thought this animal might be pretty young and I was right. Whenever something's younger, way, way, way more delicate. Things were uh, coming off awfully easy and a little quick. You can tell sometimes age, let me see if I can do it there. Can you see those teeth, how these teeth are still coming in, these, these rear molars and stuff? Um, very, very young. So when you get into those real young animals, just start to be a little bit delicate. They won't take as much time in the boil. You see the semi-flex right here? Goats and sheep, they're tough. I know I always say it. So for the most part, you're okay. Just be cognizant of it. If it starts to, if it starts to get a little bit soft, you're dealing with a younger animal and you're gonna have to uh, shorten all your times, your boil times in the peroxide, in the regular water, everything. That's one demonic looking little dude, isn't it? All right, I got. I'm done with this hot boiling water. I like to use it as a rinse down. Right, right back on the burner. I'm gonna throw in the white bone mix. Okay, this is the secret sauce. So what I'm calling the white bone creations mix is three parts water, one part aqua silk. The link is in the description. It's a 27% by volume liquid peroxide that comes in a gallon container. I mix the two together and bring it to a boil. Now I've used this batch on 10 different skulls. Once it cools, the fats and oils will rise to the surface and I remove that with a sponge every time I reuse it. With the skull in the pot, I bring it to a boil for me, that's nine minutes, and then I shut it off. I don't boil in there for long durations. If you boil for a really long time, you can count on destroying your skull. This product will degrease and whiten within moments of boiling. Once that skull comes out of the whitening mix, I give it a real good final rinse with the power washer. Anything that was hard to get off is just going to blow right off. All right, this thing washed up super clean and I got one little area right there. See where it's got some color? It's been washed in and out. My concern is when you get these young animals with these new teeth, you have these little pockets. How do we do this? How do we film this up in here? There. I have to break that pocket open literally break it and all that stuff is in that skull Let's see if I can do it here I'm gonna try to put it down on the table and film this for you so you can see y'all I am emphasizing this part because I get so many questions in every platform Instagram and YouTube about dark spots dark spots are typically something within that skull 
and sometimes it looks like there's no way there can be anything in there. You gotta break a little internal bone to get that hunk of junk. Remember, this method is designed for hunters to respect their game and put it on the wall. This method will work for any skull, but I would rather have that skull 100% clean, missing a little bone, than to have an oily skull and that hunk of bone in place. Hello again, y'all. All right, our Jacob's Ram, our four horn is completely dry. It just sat in front of a fan overnight. I use this little cheapy, nothing junker $9 fan and I just blow across everything for days. This took less than 10 hours. It's dry, dry. So I'm gonna coat it with flooring mop and glow. Anything that was a tender bone or a loose bone like you saw in the video from the boiling is all nice and firm now. Everything we talk about on this channel sounds dirty, but it's not. <laughs> so I'm gonna mop and glow everything. Skull, horns, everything. Just give it a real nice coat. And you guys know the drill if you've been watching. This kind of just gives it a very, very mild sheen. I, in some videos, say it gives it no shine. That is true in some cases. But I like to do it in and out. Let it dry. The whole, that whole dry process takes less than 10 minutes in my environment. It's really quick but it's gonna give these horns a super cool look. And then instead of siliconing, the, or excuse me, instead of bondoing these horns on, they're, they're a real, real tight fit. So I'm just actually gonna hit them with a little bit of super glue. It's such a small animal and I'm not worried about them getting knocked off. Most of these things are not gonna be handled to where I'm worried about them falling off. These things go right on the wall. If you ever want to, too, you can take a, a horn like this once you've got it wiped, and you can just dry it, and any excess will go right on the towel. Don't ever do this in your house if you can see how much crud I get on the carpet and whatnot. I really, really, really like the mop and glue to get into the horn core. If you ever cut away a horn cord, see how much stuff is in there, you'd be just blown away. It's crazy. And in that note, anything that you missed in the boil, say you couldn't see it or whatever, it's going to dry up on the skull and look yellow. You can flake it off most of the time. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. We're going to revisit it here in 10 minutes. Okay, everybody, there is the final view of the four horn. This little evil looking sheep, man. I don't know what I think, to be real honest with you. I think it's it turned out cool, but man, it's just a crazy looking critter. Oh, I almost completely forgot. I gotta introduce you to my newest family member, Mr. Beans. Hold on, y'all. This is Mr. Beans. He is 10 weeks old today. He's a German short hair pup. <laughs> and he is amazing. We lost our little Coco a couple months ago. Um, brain tumor or something, it's a pretty sad deal. I got a skull in that sink and I'm not ready for him to be chewing on it. If you guys are following on Instagram, you'll see a weekly update of Mr. Beans and the family and a whole bunch of short films that they don't really care for so much on YouTube. <clears throat> and we're just sniffing, not eating. <laughs>
Uh, thank you very much for watching. Till next week, we're gonna sous vide a sheep. Mr. Bates. Mr. Beans.